This time, I'll be talking about the final four gates of Gate Judah. This is one linear gate, two triangular gates, and a quadrangular gate. Now, to begin to understand this first gate, um, I'm going to have to describe it from the personal perspective first. Because the, the universal perspective is kind of hard for me to wrap words around, but I think the uh, personal perspective will be a good introduction to understanding what I'll be trying to say. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So, uh, the main path in this gate is from Tiferet to Gedjula. This is the path of Teth, the letter Teth, Hebrew letter Teth, which means basket. Um, uh, it's also thought of as the coiled snake, okay? Um, and it's the sign of Leo, fire sign of Leo, ruled by the sun. Now, this is in echo of the path of Aries, fire sign of Aries, letter He, from Kether to Chokmah. So this is on a lower level, so to speak, uh, reflection of that path. Okay. Here we see the, the light of the individual self, the solitary self. Its light shines down this path, just like the light of the eye, the Catholic brilliance, shone down the path of hay above. Okay. So, it is a lower reflection. And this is what the awareness is doing when it shifts from Tiferet to Gedjula. It's sort of an I am moment in reflection of the path of He. Okay. So, <clears throat> yeah. we start in Tiferet, the solitary self. The I has split into a infinite number of reflections of itself, individualized, discrete, totally unique reflections of itself, each one of which expresses a certain quantity and quality of essential meaning. Okay? That's the beginning point in Tiferet. Where you are your individual self, your essential self, the self that has been through every incarnation and will be, you know, will go through every incarnation to come. Your self. And uh, you realize that you exist in this ocean of other, you are a solitary being. Okay? You're in this skin all by yourself, so to speak. And you realize that you are. But that ocean of other is exactly like you, yet not... You are unique among that ocean, but it, the ocean of other is also composed of essential meaning, of little reflections of that same I that you are a reflection of. And you see that you are grouped together. You are all alike. You are part of this collective in Gedjula. That it all works together. Every bit of it is in absolute perfect harmony 
with every other bit of that ocean of individual cells. And you bring, uh, because the, the rightness, the perfect, the perfect, blah, blah, the perfectness, the perfection of what is being done together, what we together are creating, this whole sequential temporal universe. You bring the best of yourself. You shine uh, as brightly as you possibly can. You are you, that vital ingredient to the whole, to the functioning, the perfect synchrony of the whole. You bring that. That is the Leo, you know, the beautiful mane of the, the lion, the male lion, the Leo, the proud of oneself, of what one has to offer. Uh, and uh, just naturally takes your place among that collective. Okay. That is this gate, this descent into the collective of the individual within uh, this ocean of other individuals. So we end in Gajua. And then we reverse and pass back up that path to Tiferet. We are <clears throat> shifting our focus from this collective action to that first sort of shock of finding oneself suddenly broken into an infinite number of bits. There is an innocence to Tiferet that isn't really taken into consideration the implications of other along with self. More uh, consumed by the solitude of self in Tiferet, okay? So, <clears throat> the universal, well, going up, back up to Tiferet from Gajula, you learn, well, this whole process, you learn about your place, how you fit in this collective, how you fit in the cosmos, the importance of how you fit in the cosmos, the importance of your fitting into the cosmos. you learn uh, so much about what it means to participate in the cosmos, okay? Not to just be a bystander and letting it all go by, but the fact that you participate, whether you want to or not, you are a participant in the cosmos. And this path, this gate, is what that means at a personal level, the dynamic, okay? Now, <clears throat> at a more universal level, it's very complex. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, 
because at the universal level, the, the there is a, a big dichotomy established with Tiferet, this self and other. And from here on out, from Tiferet on out, it's all about that interaction between self and other. That is the path through which awareness self-realizes. Other gives context to self. It's, uh, it's because of other that we define ourselves in these specific ways. You know, I have these characteristics which are unique in comparison to other. It's always in comparison, in relation to other, because we are invariably and inevitably all connected. It's one thing. Okay. So, from a universal perspective, this is the whole body, the whole body of the solitary cells, an infinite number of solitary cells, the whole of the I expressing itself through essential meaning and the form that essential meaning causes, the whole body, the I, suddenly fractured into these infinite number of parts, but at the same time, at the same time, aware through each one of those infinite number of parts, the eye is fully aware of everything simultaneously. And in that awareness, The awareness that it is one thing, but also split so, so much, you know, infinitely, it must reaffirm its unification in whatever way it can. And it does that through collective through the collective of all of those parts. That's what this gate is. It's the, the I realizing that it must be a collective now. At this level, it's no longer a unity. Well, from one perspective, it is because the I fills all of those infinite number of individual selves simultaneously and thus maintains that unified awareness, but the experience of each one of those parts is as a solitary self. So the I is having that experience through all of its solitary selves and feels that need. It, it, it must unify in whatever way it can. In the only way it can, as an infinite number of parts, is through becoming a collective awareness. It collectivizes. That's what awareness does in its <clears throat> particulate form, basically. Okay? All these particles of awareness come together and form the cosmos. This is the cosmos, this infinite number 
of solitary cells all working together in perfect unison. It's just a perfect. Uh, it's just perfect, okay? Um, so that is the universal perspective of this gate. And then reversing that is again a retreat into a simpler, even though it's infinitely complex already at the point of Tiferet, it's simpler than it is in Gajula. In Gajula it's, it's more complex because other plays such a large role in this level. Okay? So, you learn all about that universal urge to merge is what this is basically about here. Okay. The first triangular gate, <clears throat> again, I'll, I'll start with the personal and then move to the uh, universal instead of the other way around. Um, so this first triangular gate goes from Tiferet to Gejula, from Gejula to Hokma, and then from Hokma to Tiferet. Okay. So <clears throat> we start in Tiferet. Our own solitary self, our individual self, our core being, our depth point, okay? <clears throat> so we start there and we uh, express, you know, we shine the brightest we possibly can as we enter Gedjula, descend into Gedjula. Okay, we, we shine our light into the collective. Then we rise up and we let go of collectivity and rise into the unity of parts. Hukma, where all essential meaning exists as one, undifferentiated, return to the simplicity of oneness. And then we descend upon that path of Gemini, Zayin, into Tiferet. And as we descend, uh, the body of essential meaning begins to polarize. And we descend into Tiferet as self and other. Okay. And then we reverse we reunite all with all of that essential meaning in Hokma and then descend as our essential meaning and other into Gejula. And then we return to Tiferet. Okay. So, <clears throat> this contextualizes that shift from Tiferet to Gejula, and the main contextualization is that path of Zayn, the introduction of other. That, remember, that is the first introduction of self and other. Self and other. And that is crucial in understanding this whole dynamic with the path of Teth, Tiferet, to Gedula. <clears throat> it's all happening in this context of self 
and other, and that's really driving things along, okay? And from the universal perspective, the whole I filling that whole infinite body of solitary cells uh, becomes the collective of awareness and then rises up to that infinite unity of essential meaning and then passes down to Tiferet that again, that body of differentiated essential meanings. And then back around. So here, you come to understand that universal process and how important, how significant that shift of awareness between Kether and Tiferet really is. Just the infinite complexification that everything goes through in that shift. It's still all one thing. Okay. So then the the quadrangular gate is uh, different down to Gedjula, Gedjula up to Hakma, but this time Hakma to Tiferet, and then Tif I mean Hakma to Kether, and then Kether down to Tiferet, and then back around. Okay. Uh, so. So we start in Tiferet as your individual self and you shine your light brightly into the collective. And then you rise up from the collective th through that phase of differentiation into undifferentiation. You know, you are again returning to that infinite ocean of essential meaning in Hakuma. And then you continue up to Kether and that simplification of it being just, just one thing. Just one thing. And then you descend, you make that transition from just the one thing to the one thing of an infinite number of parts in different. Down to your solitary self. And then you rise back up to Kether, the eye, down to Hakma, essential meaning, down to Gedjula, collective awareness, and then back to Tiferet, is your solitary self. <clears throat> so, the most important part of that, this gate is that descent from Kether to Tiferet. That shift in awareness, that monumental shift in self-awareness from the one thing to the infinite number of things and the one thing amongst the, that infinite number of things. Because that's you. You are one thing. Right? You are one thing. It, it, it's just a perfect reflection of the I. So that's the main dynamic of this gate, the main lesson of this gate in this context of Tiferet to Gedjula. Okay. 
<clears throat> and so, uh, from the universal perspective, it's again the same. It's that, that final leg of the journey that is of most significance in this gate. So, the I exists in Tiferet as an infinite number of parts, fully conscious, fully aware of each one of those parts simultaneously, and then becomes the whole collective, consciously, simultaneously, all of the parts together, working together, and then rises up to the undifferentiated familiarity of the infinite essential meaning, and then makes that shift back to the pureness of I in Cather. And then makes that massive shift down to Tiferet and breaks itself into an infinite number of bits. It becomes again an infinite number of parts, yet intimately connected with every one of those parts. This is the body of the eye. It's its arms and legs and fingers and toes. And then rise up again together in that simplicity of the eye, down to the infinite essential meaning, down to the collective of individual awarenesses, and returning to Tiferet in solitary selves. So, like I say, it's the, that final leg from Cather to Tiferet that is the most important here. Okay? So, the, the <clears throat> final gate uh, involves a hidden path. It's a triangle. And it's from Tiferet to Gedjula, Gedjula up the hidden path to Kether, and then Kether down to Tiferet and back around. Okay. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> again, from the personal perspective first, we start in Tiferet as myself as my depth point, me exclusively I, my little reflection of the I. And then I join with the collective and I shine my little flicker of the I as brightly as possible to uh, aid in this perfect work. And then, I go straight up to the eye along the hidden path. Returning to the simplicity of I. And then I descend into Tiferet and again into myself, my side. And then I reverse. Go back to the Kether, the simplicity of I, that complete unity of awareness, and then descend quickly and directly into Gajula, into the collective awareness. And then return to Tiferet in my solitary self. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> uh, this, 
this puts it all in context with the I, that connection between the I, the unity of all awareness, and the collective awareness. And the ways that they are the same thing, just organized a little differently. One is an expression of the other. Okay. So that dynamic is what we learn about in this uh, uh, gate. And we also learn something different about this descent from Kether into Tiferet. Slightly different perspective. And the same is going to hold true with the universal perspective. So in the universal, we start again as the whole body, the whole body of those individual selves, the solitary selves, aware of all of them, so not just aware of all of them, but experiencing existence through them, and we descend into the collective of awareness and experience existence through that collective awareness, that entire infinite body of the collective awareness, and then we return to the unity of awareness in Catherine. The simple I in Cather. And then we descend into Tiferet, into that whole body of individual selves, and again experience existence spread out in this way through all these infinite number of different experiences that all together form my experience as the I. Okay? And then we backtrack around. <clears throat> and again, it puts that, pers that shift from the I to Tiferet in its slightly different perspective. And uh, this relationship between the I and the collective also puts it in a clearer perspective. Okay? And, well, as with all the gates, there's all of these things to learn and experience in working the gates. So, so <clears throat> that's it for Kedula. Next time, we'll start with Kedula. Bye-bye.